Thanks for being here, everyone. Thanks for being here for part of Sweet Home Uptown. It is sweet to be here at the Sunnyside Mall rededication, celebrating the preservation of Uptown as a home for everyone. Thank you. No, I'm a howling wolf. And I've been howling all around your door. You know I'm a howling wolf. I want little girl and you won't hear me how no more listen I don't know how so long you know I have made Come on, fellas, come on now. I don't know so long, people. You know I have made my time for so. What I want, little girl, and you won't hear me. Oh, no more. Now listen. When I get to howling, I will dig me a hole down. In the ground. Bring it, fellas. Bring it, fellas. When I get to howling, people, you know I would dig me a hole. Some folk call me a black panel. But my woman, she knows the way I sound.
up for little Frank. Come on, Frank, bring it on now. Bring it on. Bring it on. Get the howling. You know they all call me too bad, Jim. Oh yeah, they do, baby. When I get to howling, people. Sometimes I get real mad. And Sometimes I get to think about that little woman of mine. I holler, mm -hmm. I bought a brand new car. You know that that new Cadillac thing, and and, and still wasn't good enough. And I had to holler, mm -hmm. I bought a penthouse apartment down on Lakeshore Drive, and people, you know that still wasn't good enough. And I had to holler, mm -hmm. Whoa, yay, whoa, yay, whoa, yay. And I bees jumping from limb to limb. Ho! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all have fun. Thank you. We had fun too. We had a great time here. Like a house party out here. Whoa, two, one, two, three, four.
people has a special place in my heart and in our hearts. We know that the <laughs> we know that the voice is fighting for our rights to stay here in Uptown and in our home neighborhoods by protecting affording housing. Affordable housing, excuse me. Ain't been in school in a while. <laughs> voice of the people started 53 years ago and has a rich history of protecting families from displacement. Today we celebrate, y'all to hear me, today we celebrate the history, that history with a little blues, and we're going to play you something now. Hey, Joe, man. Let's go get some heat. Let's go, uh, let's get some Italian beef, man. What do you say? Oh, man, that sounds good. Cool. Hey, I know the best Chicago Italian beef place, man. It's the best, best beef in Chicago, man. Where is that? You ever been to Johnny's? Johnny's? Yeah, man, Johnny's beef, man. The best Italian beef in the city of Chicago, man. Man, I ain't never heard of Johnny's. Where is Johnny's? Uh, it's so run like uh, Harlem and North Avenue, basically. Harlem and North Avenue? Chicago, it's like, you know, like a couple minutes. Ah, uh, Joe, you, you don't know what you're talking about, no way. Y'all know what you're talking about. There's something that you should know. You know it ain't from Chicago. About a guy by the name of Joe. Joe, so you ain't from Chicago. Well, listen to this little ditty. Joe, you ain't from Chicago. Because he ain't from the Windy City. Joe, you ain't from Chicago. I can play the blues. 
from Chicago. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Fun. That's off our latest release of Alligator Records. That is on the north side up here in Chicago. That's now, called uh, Joe, You Ain't From Chicago. And I, I'm not from Chicago. That's for sure. We can tell. Hey, hey, hey. We both wrote that song, and he wrote my lyrics, and I wrote his. <laughs> yeah, I was taking shots myself. He was sticking up for me. And then we just switched and we're on. I'm going to sing me an old blues, girl. Yeah.
Lord, don't hurt me because I'm sick, y'all. Mm. song that Oscar and I wrote together here. It's called uh, Ain't No Fun When the Rabbit Got the Gun.
for a minute. Mr. J. W. Lawler. We call him Johnny Cool. Okay, we got Frank, little Frank on guitar. Martin Bender back on the drums. John W. Lawler on the upright bass. Billy Flynn on guitar. My name's Show No Second. This is my buddy Oscar Wilson with the Cash Box Kings. Thanks so much for being such a wonderful audience, man. What a wonderful time we had. We got um, little tip bucket and CDs up here. If you want to grab a CD, take home with you. We'll give half of what we make back to the voice of the people. Thanks a lot, everybody. Keep doing the great work you're doing. Keep fighting the good fight. We'll see you soon. Stay healthy, be well. Thank you. The Boys Center of People started 53 years ago and has a rich history of protecting families from displacement. Today we celebrate. Y'all to hear me. Today we celebrate. That history with a little blue. One, two, one, two, three, four. Hi, Buju, Sakoli, Dishinakaz, Raven, Roberts. Um, I just want to give you guys a friendly reminder that you're on Indian land. This once used to be Potawatomi territory, which is part of the three fires, so the Dawa, the Chippewa. And you got to remember that this was a Great Lake area, so a lot of different tribes used to come here to trade and travel. Even the buffalo used to reach up here and drink some of this good water. So, you know, as you're out there and as you're walking, just remember that the land is sacred. Every land you walk on, you don't know who may have walked there or who was born there or passed away there. But just remember that this land here, Chicago, Sikawa, Sikagu, land of smelly onions, so they say. You know, but we believe that to be a language mistranslation, you know. They were trying to like figure out, you know, they're like, Where are, what is this, what is this? And we're like, the onion, huh? No. <laughs> but anyways, welcome, remember, you're on Potawatomi territory, Odawa, the Miami, Ojibwe. There's many tribes that used to come and live along these shores. Um, enjoy yourself, you know, enjoy the season changing and, um, yeah, give, give yourself a hug, give thanks to the grandmothers, and um, pray for the people who are having struggling with water right now, with the lead, and we got a lot of different things going on. Just remember that what's happening in other places, like with these oil spills and stuff, it comes right to our doorstep. Everything is connected, everything is intertwined. So if you want to stand up, get your water tested, you know, you can always call 411, do different things, but, you know, look out for your elders in your building, and um, send some prayers and maybe some, some good clean water over there. So thank you, Potawatomi land. Bless everyone. So the question is, what's the story for Voice of the People?
the urban renewal controversies around the construction of Truman College were the real origin. So Voice rose as a reaction to that. They had grandiose plans, you know, a literally one-for-one -one replacement of the housing that was being destroyed. That never got built. So they got involved in the more um, slow but important work of preserving one building at a time. We moved from a tenant organizing group to one that began doing management of apartment buildings and eventually development. Voice of the People came into being at a time when Uptown was undergoing uh, a plague of arson when major developments like Truman College were still a figment of downtown imagination, but landlords were taking advantage of tenants, and the voice was right in the middle of that. In 1976, the increasingly organized, unified, and determined multiracial community of Uptown, a multiracial community in the most segregated city in the world of Chicago, um, organized the first of 15 annual survival days uh, on the mall here, where we said, we're gonna at least one day in the year claim this mall as a place that is the community's own, where people can gather together in peace, where people can have a good time. And let me just say that the political machine um, and the district commander at the time had predicted disaster, and we showed that that community could take the mall and hold it for a day and make it a model of people living together in peace. The time I was at Voice in the early 80s, Voice had begun doing housing development. From its organizing roots in the 70s, they had begun to develop buildings, six flats. But I don't think Voice ever forgot its roots in organizing, in community empowerment, and an understanding that it wasn't really housing development that was the heart of the work. It was empowering the community. It was allowing Uptown, the residents of Uptown, the current residents of Uptown, to have a say in the development of Uptown. I have always had a soft spot in my heart for Voice of the People because my grandmother was my first um, introduction into VOP. She was um, a member, one of the first to move into the building on Hazel and Sunnyside. Um, so she really fought side by side with them, even when they were um, trying to boycott Truman from being built. I remember being on picket lines, plenty of uh, coloring in the corner while radicals were making change uh, at the table. So I literally have been the product of Voice of the People for tw I'm 29, 29 years now. This additional housing that was, was preserved or rehabbed or built over the course of the 70s, 80s, and 90s that took advantage of city, state, and federal dollars to create additional affordable housing. Vintage buildings can become community anchors for their respective communities. One of Voice's signal achievements has been to preserve diversity in a neighborhood that's been under enormous pressure for decades now. You had people from Appalachia, African Americans who'd been displaced from the Cabrini Green area, and people from Southeast Asia all living together in Voice of the People housing. It was a really heady and, and uh, wonderful mix of people. Voice of the People were the developers, and, and so uh, I, we raised, my wife and I, we raised three kids who are now young adults and, and uh, you know, prosperous citizens in, in Chicago.
We are very good at building and developing and maintaining sometimes for 20-year uh, periods or 30-year periods, often tied to kind of tax credits and some of the subsidies and incentives that the government provides us. But eventually there is always the risk or threat of that housing then being lost to the affordable housing sector. The whole struggle to develop some of the, save some of the high rises along the lakefront. Um, so really, a, you know, pretty uh, steady increase in capacity running all the way into the 1990s. And I think at the end of the day, people want a safe house and they want to live their lives. One of the hallmarks of Voice of the People, which has been a tension, has been to live in the space between family and being very informal and community oriented and still trying to run a business and pay the rent. Um, and that's, I think, that's a good tension. That's a good struggle. And, you know, Voice has occupied that space for decades now and is still figuring it out. So no, I, I think it's a good legacy. In Sweet Home Uptown 2021, we wanted to honor three people of distinction. Someone who at a grassroots level has shown leadership over time. Someone who worked at Voice and had a significant impact in the community. And someone who has had an impact in community development as a whole, citywide and in our community as well. I am a descendant of slaves and my great-grandparents were sharecroppers and my mom and dad were blue-collar workers and my extended family were blue-collar workers or pretty poor folks when I was growing up as a kid. So I learned about and saw a great deal of injustice when I was young and that really stuck with me and that everyone, every last one of us deserves to have high quality housing great education, a job that is meaningful and good paying, access to goods and services and arts and culture to feed their soul. So I have set out in my life uh, to make sure that I'm doing my part to help every last one of us live a fulfilling life with dignity. We have created a giant welcome mat for community organizations, Organizations that started with the same kind of activism that led to the creation of Voice of the People. We've uh, always, for the past 30 years, supported housing entities that come together because people decide that they want to preserve their building and make sure that them and their households don't get displaced, like shared equity housing. So I would imagine that that's sort of how the work that I've done and my agency has done really sort of fits into the ethos of a grassroots resident-led organization like Voice of the People. We like to say that we support um, neighborhood people that have big ideas that can be brought to scale. Bringing resources to enable those types of authentic, embedded change agents is an honor. And I'm really proud of the work that we've been able to do at the Chicago Community Loan Fund for the past 30 years to empower change agents like those. At a time when it's more important than ever for us to work on closing the racial wealth gap, to imagine in my lifetime that uh, low-income people, working class people um, in Chicago will actually be able to build more measurable worth is phenomenal and really compelling. And I'm glad that I'll be a part of that work uh, as well as my agency and partners like Voice of the People.
I enjoy doing what I do. And uh, to me, it's just something that needs to be done. If there's something that needs to be done and I can do it, I will do it. I'm proud of everything that I've done. Yes, I am. Well, Marlene Barton came to Uptown in the early 70s. She was a pioneer on her block as one of the first black families to live there. She worked in model cities, anti-poverty programs, uh, getting people food and clothing and shelter. She was organizing parents in her schools and engaging youth in safety programs. And, and Marlene has just been always the person that was there supporting a variety of causes in the community, pounding the pavement for independent politicians to get elected. And she was completely dedicated to working with youth or uh, affordable housing with her work at Voice of the People as a board member since 1999. Her commitment and her living her values has been amazing. It's not the way it used to be. It's not, it's, this is not really uptown anymore. They say, well, what you mean? And I say, because low-income housing are going out. The few that we have left, if we don't do the right thing and hold on, they're going to. And the only way that we can do that is all the low-income housing, the people are gonna have to work together like we did in the beginning. two things uh, that have had a big influence. One is the times I grew up in. You know, I grew up in Michigan uh, in the late 60s, but really grew up with the notion that politics was exciting and uh, noble and worth being involved in. And there was a lot of optimism at that time too. I and mean, there's a lot of tension and a lot of strife, but also a lot of sense of potential. So the times were important. And the other thing would be my religious faith. I'm Roman Catholic and Grew up in a milieu of parents that were very involved in social justice work and uh, a dinner table where people talked about the issues of the day. And I very much imbued that growing up so that, you know, when I graduated college, wanted to come to Chicago and, you know, make my mark. So that that's, as much as I can explain it, those are probably the two biggest influences in what I do. When I look back at accomplishments, I'm just very aware of how much it's about teams and not individuals. And, you know, I would say, yes, I had an impact, but um, I'm most proud of the group of people we assembled, um, which was, you know, an interracial, different generations that really pulled together during a pretty hard time. You know, we had uh, real struggles with our funding, with neighborhood opposition. Um, and so it was history. You know, we really did uh, turn the tide and uh, I'm, what really thrills me is the fact that this housing is still uh, available. It's still in great condition. It's still providing a platform for people, men, women, their children, to live in a great neighborhood right on the lakefront. So yeah, I, I would own that that is uh, a history to be, be proud of. Good luck uh, to more years of uh, resident leadership at Voice of the People. I came in from Old Town. Then Old Town had started changing over where the 
it became violent. All violence everywhere. So I started going through the papers, calling up people about apartments. And uh, one man I called and he said, I don't think you want to live in this neighborhood. And I said, why not? He said, because it's all Spanish over here. I said, okay, but then what do you think I am? He said, white. I said, no, I'm not. I came uh, because it was war in, in Bosnia. Serbia, they came to occupy Bosnia because they wanted all the Serbia to be orthodox. And uh, they, they said on a letter, if you don't live in, uh, I don't know, about 10 days, uh, you're going to be in that bag, that hotel. My great-grandmother is Potawatomi. We were like kicked out in 1833, and it was called the Trail of Death. My grandmother, um, she came here in about the 1940s. I can't be too sure, but I know it was prior to the Native American Relocation Act. She heard there was more jobs and work in Chicago, so she moved into Chicago. Basically, my grandma ended up coming back, like my family came back like a hundred years later. They, they took me even to a uh, firing squad to shoot me, my wife and me and my uh, sister-in-law. And uh, thank God somebody came who knows me very well from before and he was still in charge of the police. He said, Vito, is that you? I said, of course it's me. He said, you go back to police station and I and I take the case over. So I had some friends, really good friends, Serbs. They were it's always, you know, good and bad people in every country. My, my future is here and uh, I'm really happy actually to be here with, with the voice of the people. Grandma said somebody told her there were some natives, you know, in a certain part of town. And so during that time, a lot of natives were living, residing in uptown. She said a lot of natives would come off the train from the reservations. There would be other natives waiting down there by the train to um, kind of just like help them, guide them, tell them where they can get food, where they could like possibly get shelter, you know. So the next person I called, he had a German accent. I spoke to him in a German accent. And he said, you can come tomorrow and see it. Fine. How much is the rent? 125, six beautiful rooms. And uh, so I knocked on the door. His wife came to the door and I said, I came to see your husband. He said, you have an apartment for rent. She said, oh no, 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 it's rented already. And he, by that time, he stepped out. I said, 10.30, you don't be here at 10.30 and I'm here. He said, oh, okay. So that's how I got it. He didn't want to go back on his word because I'm staring in his eye. He couldn't say, I made a mistake. focuses right now, this idea of sustainable diversity and resident services are key to mobility and trying to overcome some of the inequality that characterizes this country. And I give voice credit now for trying to figure out how do you move that from being episodic to being long term. Um, and I think it's, it's a, a very worthy goal and it will take a lot of hard work because real estate markets are unforgiving and patterns of racial segregation are entrenched in Chicago. And we cannot ignore the differences among us. We need to come together around them, but we cannot ignore that there are differences and that uh, what worked here may not work there. And so I applaud Voices and what it's done in Uptown. One of the things I've been impressed by, and I think it's really important work that's going on at Voices, is the thinking and the strategic effort to try and uh, not only manage and develop affordable housing, but develop ways to 
sustain it for the long term so that the community can count on and rely on that housing stock always being kept as affordable. That helps avoid issues like gentrification that we see in a lot of communities. It helps the integrity and the community that's already living there. The kind of novel strategies and ideas that Mike and Voices coming up with right now are real important models. What are the next steps of, of, of enabling a community to remain diverse and inclusive and economically stable. The urgency has even grown greater. If we're going to assure Uptown's future as Chicago's most economically and racially diverse community, we really need to have new strategies to address that. And that's why I think the leadership of the Voice of the People in promoting the creation of a diversity land trust is so critical. It is essential not just for Uptown, but for all of Chicago. It is an opportunity to be having innovative strategies and program implementation to assure a sustainable diversity. And one of the key things for that is to provide property tax relief. We are now exploring with experts all around town how we can formulate a community land trust we're calling a diversity land trust. The owners, the participating members, would have to demonstrate their commitment to affordable housing permanently. That would help us to win property tax relief that is significant and also to win access to resources, subsidies, and programming to help keep our buildings economically and socially viable over time. What's unique about Uptown um, is that it is both uh, a high-income community and a low-income community and has a middle-income community. So in many ways, it has a really healthy mix of incomes, and those are the very communities where you want to make sure that the lower quartile of incomes aren't pushed out and become less economically diverse. And by using additional layer of a land trust, you're putting in some more belt and suspenders around the perpetual affordability of those properties. And we want to make sure that those folks aren't pushed out. And the Diversity Land Trust is a unique model to ensure that hundreds, if not thousands, of fixed income working individuals and families are kept in neighborhoods of opportunity like Uptown indefinitely. For us to have success in setting up a community land trust, we'll need the support of lenders, investors, government at different levels. And most importantly, we need to make a commitment that economically diverse communities is what we want, that we actually want sustainable diversity. And to do that, affordable housing is a key component. And I think if a decade from now or two decades from now, we wanted to measure our collaborative success, it's going to be that diversity is still here and is thriving in Uptown. Voices is really a key vehicle and partner in maintaining that ability to kind of have that respect for the community that it's serving and continue to see the diverse populations that live here have a safe and affordable home that they can always count on. But Voice of the People is more family. It's listening. They Voice of the People listen to understand why property management, they just listen to respond. Why should someone give to Voice of the People? I mean, I think people do need support over the course of their life. I've needed support. Our families have needed support. So the way Voice is trying to weave in supports, not duplicate things, I think is very worthy and very interesting work. Hi, my name is Sharisha Mackey. I live in Sunnyside of Uptown. I really love it here, and I really love Voice of the People. They my people, they my family. They all I got down here. No other. If I were a donor who had as a part of my principles or my values, I would bet my money on Voice of the People. For over 50 years, Voice of the People has been walking the walk walking the talk, making sure that low-income residents actually participate in leadership and operate in the corporation. 
putting tough decisions in front of residents about the viability of the very buildings that they live in is something that many housing operators struggle to do and Voice of the People has done that for over 50 years. So if I want to support a group that has proven that that model can work, I would bet on Voice of the People. Voice is, is it. You know, we are, I am, I'm that voice of the people and, and as a community, we need to empower folks, you know, those same opportunities. And your dollars will help us to continue to do what we've proven we can do, but also enable us to do what needs to be done next. I stay in income-based housing. Without what I have now, I wouldn't be where I am today. I am most grateful in getting involved with Voice of the People, learning them, really hearing them, has helped mold me to where I am today. Out the kindness of your heart, of anything you can give will be most gracious because you're not just giving to give, you're giving to give hope, you're giving to build, you're giving to invest. And it's a lot of people out here that will really, really admire it and appreciate it.
します。